Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Story Darlings podcast. I'm Sandra. And I'm Tara. Tara, what do we have going on today? So we are finally getting to, (laughs) was it May's book club book of the month? No, it was April's. April's book club book of the month, guys. Um, Took us a bit. (laughs) Life is full. (laughs) But but we're here. Um, So we are talking about the Ever King. And I'm just going to do a hot take. Like, (laughs) the first part of this book, it was hard to get into. I agree with that. It was, it was, it was hard. Like, but once it started going, I was like, okay, okay, I can get there. It kind of reminded me of, like, the first time we read Blood and Ash Uh because there was so much world dumping. So it took, like, several chapters for me to get used to it. Well, and there wasn't – I didn't think that there was so much world dumping in this one. It was just, like, hard to get into. Like, nothing happened. Nothing happened, and there's lots of characters introduced. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, not necessarily on page, but referred to as well, and I didn't know what I was supposed to be paying attention to. Mm Mm-hmm. And I started reading the second book just a little bit, and it you seems, brat. <laughs> it seems very similar, and I'm like, I don't want this prologue to be 18 pages long. Like, tell me what's happening. Yes. Um, so, as Tara said, there is a book that just came out this past January, The Ever Queen, and then the last book in this trilogy, I guess, The Mist Thief, comes out June 30th. So we'll have one more. Ooh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so like the, the mist thief. thief. Hey, there's a character that I think that that's about. Were they in this book? Uh huh. I'll I'll just like spoilers here, guys. If you have not read this book, I'm I'm giving it all <laughs> like, out. Why are you here? Um, we <laughs> we are gonna jump way to the like end, and we meet three characters throughout the book. We first meet Sewell. Sewell. However you say his name. Um, Little old guy that has had some brain trauma um, and can say very, very few words. And he's like the cook on the ship, right? And then we meet Celine, who is, I think they called her Tide. What what they call her? What was her last name? Tide maker or Tide tide singer? Yeah, something like that with the tide. So she can control water. And then we meet a Gavin, and towards the end of the book, we we discover that a Gavin and Celine are related; they're brother and sister. And then, in one of like the best scenes ever for me, we find out that Sewell is their dad, and he the reason he was the way he was was he was trying to protect his kids, because Gavin has a very special special talent which is that he can turn himself into mist and basically travel on water. That's like what I was thinking with the mist. Yeah. So mm-hmm. basically people had been trying to kill, like if they found out who Gavin or what his talent was, they would kill him. Right. And so his dad was trying to protect him. And then it was discovered, like instead of killing them, they got away and he had another child and that is Celine. And so they were all three at risk and Eric being the stand-up guy, the morally gray villain slash hero, um, saved them all and put them on a ship. I love Sewell. He was such a lovable character. He reminded me of like Hodor from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Hodor. And it's like, you said brain trauma or something. It's like he can think clear thoughts and Mm -hmm. if he's given a task he knows what to do but he substitute words for other things and phrasing is off it's almost like he's under a a curse of some kind is what it felt like to me you know yeah well they they mentioned that he he had a an accident in battle or something is what they Mm -hmm. called it but towards the end they mentioned that he was saving his kids and was tortured and that's how he He got the way he was. A lot of torture in this book. Yes. So the the prologue, I will say, was really interesting for the book because Mm -hmm. it takes place, they're like nine years old or something, and Songbird, or Olivia, is visiting Eric 
serpent in his little prison cell thing. And she's sneaking him like a little necklace thing with a bird on it. And they have like this little trade where he gives her his family rune or mantle, I guess is what it's called. He he doesn't give that to her. Or she had it. Yeah. Yeah. So her family, um, so backstep a little bit. <laughs> so she, her family are the Earth Fae, right? Her dad's the king. And his family are the Sea Fae. And they were at war because his dad, much like Dorian's, is a piece of shit, right? <laughs> and so is his uncle. And so at this point, his uncle had been driving him to war with the Earth Bay. And in the process of losing the war, he lost his talisman. That is his family's talisman. And so she had brought it from her dad's keep to show him. And then bad things happened because she broke the talisman. I know that I felt so bad for her. Like she mm-hmm. trips, poor thing, which is what you would have done and uh-huh, like falls yeah. on it and just like it crumbles. It's so old. Like it just breaks. <laughs> well, and she just promised him that like she would keep it safe. And then she's like, oh shit. Like five <laughs> minutes later, it's broken. And this mantle, more than just being like a family heirloom, it's meant to amplify their power too. Like mm-hmm. if they're in a way deserving of it, like if they can win it. And so it's just sad. And I think they're getting ready to release Eric or something when he's imprisoned Mm -hmm. and he's been through a lot. And then it like fast forwards to present time, the crimson fest. And there was like a lot of funny moments, I will say, with like Alexi. (laughs) I absolutely adore Jonas. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like he was hilarious. Such Uh a man-ho. Yeah, well, and his just like snappy comebacks. Like I loved it. (laughs) Tara Um, looks for that. Yes, I do. And then, so, Eric kidnaps Olivia. Mm -hmm, So the serpent mm -hmm. kidnaps the songbird. And he plays it off that he did it so that he can get her dad back. But reading, we know that there was more to that. He was drawn to her. And we also know that she, when she fell on this talisman, she got, like, this brand, right? And we don't know what the brand was. I assumed it was the talisman, like, branded into her. But it doesn't sound like that later. Because later we find out that it's the brand of the kings. Yeah. And so, like, it didn't sound like they recognized it as the talisman, but a different kind of brand. And so he is treating her better than you would necessarily think that a captor would treat his captive. Right. He says he would do all of these things, but like then he doesn't back it up. This book was marketed as like a dark romance, like dark fantasy romance. And I didn't get that vibe from Eric at all. Like I was never at any point like, oh, he's going to harm her and hurt her and just brutalize mm-hmm. her. No. Definitely a lovable Morley Gray. <laughs> I I would say that anybody else. On that ship, I would totally believe would have harmed Um, The Lucian the th- guy that was ransacking the island, that mm-hmm. whole scene with, like, the torture and the eyeball and all of that. Oh, I was yeah, like, wow, that was- okay, that's grotesque. <laughs> yes. Um, but I don't, I don't, first, like, I didn't see him as anything. Like, I, I knew he had feelings about her because when he did go, go to Lucian, like, or whoever it was, like, to get his his songbird thing that she gave him back, I was like, oh, he totally still feels for her. Mm -hmm, So there's mm -hmm. no way he's going to harm her, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I didn't believe for one second that he would have harmed her. I really liked Livia as a character at the Crimson Fest. She's like, she has it in her head that she's going to find some guy and she's just going to sleep with him, get it out of the way, have some fun before she's married off to someone for political reasons. And she ends up like locking eyes with Eric, you know, across the room. And then they take it upstairs and they play like two truths and one lie or something, right? Like they yeah. do that. <laughs> but he 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 tells all truths. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on. Um, and then he literally takes her, like steals her out the window or something like that. Yeah. Which but I like. Do you believe that she would have been like basically sold off for political gain? I don't think her dad would have done that to her. 
no. The way that she talks about him, thinks about him, he's just such a good dad. Lovable. Yeah. Well, yeah. and even some of the other characters mentioned that, like, there's no way her dad would, like, do that. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to have to have her her approval first before you. So, like, you're being dumb if you're going straight to her dad because he's never going to do that. Mm-hmm. So we see a lot of time, or we spend a lot of time in this book on the ship, the Ever King's ship, um, which, from Livia's perspective, I think it looks kind of run down, right? It looks like it's had better days. But from Eric's perspective, you see that the ship is well maintained and can do some pretty cool things like go under the sea which is interesting to me i've seen people be a little bit confused about the worlds and how they're configured against each other and it's almost like he uses his power to go under the sea and they Uh like flip around to where it's like an upside down thing which there's still ocean and sea and like how and okay i just have food sitting by my desk so so like this is <laughs> shush. So this is what I I envision as the oceans, right? And so here's Livia's world, and then here, like if you flip it, is um, Eric's world. And so you travel through this little bit of the ocean to get to either side. So it doesn't yes. necessarily have to flip, but this is like one world and this is the other. Which I liked it. And so the like chasm is like right in the middle of this. Mm-hmm. And it's like the whole the hole to the both sides. I don't think I've ever read a story that that's how the world is situated, like a flip side like that. Um, but I did like how he gave her the history of the ship, like the big spikes that come out of this black mm-hmm. ship represent a, an ever king. And his father has like a broken little mm-hmm. spine or whatever on it that he's very sensitive about and- in that scene. Well, he says that it's because his dad died. I feel like maybe there's more to that and that his dad was evil and lost his, like, way. And maybe that's why it broke. Maybe. Because he was a broken king and not, like, you know, looking out for the best of his people and whatever. We also learn that in the Ever Kingdom, there's some kind of plague or blight that is spreading. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course our girl, Olivia is the only one that seems to be able to heal it and being directly connected to Eric amplifies her power and like, lets her, I guess, do it more, like help heal more of the land and be able to keep up with that, like endurance wise. And so mm-hmm. he's, he's keeping her around for a multi- multitude of multiple multitude reasons. reasons. <laughs> um. The scene where she discovers she can heal and where everybody else discovers she can heal the earth is really cute because it's the scene with Lucian. So we just saw this torture of this dude because he was trying to get these lotus plants um, and this whole island is blighted, right? And so he was trying to basically steal or whatever, um, ransack this island. And so everything was on fire and blah, blah, blah. And Eric comes to save the day and kills Lucian and our little Livy is like over there with the little kid who's crying because it's sad that its whole world is basically destroyed. And she, to make it happy, she like makes the earth bloom again. And everybody's like, uh, what the fuck did she just do? There's a scene right after this is probably one of my favorites in the book. And so they're trying to figure out where to next. And so they go to this tavern and Eric's not really thinking about looking at all the people slash creatures that are in this place. And so he like leaves her alone with um, people to watch over her like Celine. And there's like a siren, um, like a male siren singer, whatever, in the tavern who starts luring Livia in. And she gets capital H horny. And it is the funniest scene. I could like this one. I was just like flipping through the pages like, oh, this is good. This is good. And this is the first time we saw Eric get super jealous because she was she she was going for the siren at first and then he got a she, little mad yes and then she like turned her affections towards eric and tate too was it tate no no tate saw yeah but um, she's she made an offhanded comment like oh i'll hook i'll, about I'll kiss 
Yeah, Larson. Um, and Tate saw Tate is Eric's cousin, and so he is the son of the aforementioned uncle that is also horrible, right? And uh, he he abused Tate a lot, and Eric's dad abused him a lot, and um, stuff. And so they have this kind of trauma bond, I think. And so Tate is all about his cousin and protecting his cousin and things. And at first, I did not like Tate. I did not like him because I I could see some of the uncle on him, like, and, but he grew on me because there's a scene where he um, helps save Eric's life and he doesn't want anybody around um, because he's afraid that they might be a part of the problem. And, you know, he definitely doesn't want Libby around because he thought that she was the one who like stabbed Eric and it wasn't. And she's like, well, I'm not moving. And then we find out what Tate's ability is, which is he can see what your, your heart's desires are. And so he does that to her. And then he's like, okay, fine. You can come because he saw that her heart's desire was for Eric to live. And she was going to do whatever she could to, to do that. And then Tate ends up injured later on. And like his comment to Eric is like, I came right away when you got hurt. Where have you been? And it was so great. I'm like, okay, that's the cousin relationship that I was wanting to feel. Yeah. And I think Tate was coming out of his, like, I have to be like my uncle, like my dad. Mm -hmm. I think the author LJ Andrews was definitely trying to throw us for a red herring with Tate, like Mm -hmm. kept equating like some mystery figure as like this brother kind of figure that was causing the blight and cursing the land and out to get the power for himself and stuff. And then I really just enjoyed how Olivia and Eric's relationship just kept opening up more and more and more. So there's a scene where I think it's after he goes to the tower to see what's the grandmother's Narza. name Narza and she's referred to as like the sea witch or something right mm-hmm. yeah she's like the head of the house of bones or something like that which yes is the witches and the sirens yeah and we discover that she is the one who made the talisman and she put some of her magic in it and we discover this because she did it for her son-in-law Eric's dad and but she you have to be fully committed for it to have its full power. And as we discover, he was not committed to her daughter. Like he did not give a shit besides her giving him an heir. And then he basically made Eric kill her. Yeah. He made her him pick between saving him and the mom, which he picked his mom. Yes. And his mom was so in love with his dad that she made him pick his dad and she died. And then that was the start of, I think, Eric's dad hating his guts because he knew that he didn't pick him. Grandma had some foresight. (laughs) Yeah. And so she she warned Eric that, like, that mantle is not going to work for you if you're not all in. Like, if, if she doesn't know your worst bits and love you still... It's not going to work because that's that's the way I made it. Like I was trying to safeguard my daughter mm-hmm. because I think she knew what kind of a man Eric's dad was. Grandma's no. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we haven't talked about Eric's power yet, which uh-uh. we just mentioned that he killed his mom using his power. Right. So his power is his blood can be a poison or like a medicine basically like it can either heal you or kill you and so it's all dependent on him and he gets to choose so if you take some of his blood in he either sings or he doesn't and if he sings then you live and if he doesn't sing you die i got some major azrael vibes off of eric and like mm-hmm. how mangled his body is and the whole blood singing type of stuff and the shitty dad vibe shitty dad Mm -hmm. and that his dad did it to him yeah for sure yeah i also loved how he took i don't know if he took livia to his favorite place which was his mother's gardens or Mm -hmm. if she like learned through celine or something like that but she starts bringing the gardens back to life like how his mom used to take care of it and i i love that scene too yeah 
and the waterfall scene, <laughs> the little romantic swim <laughs> where he didn't like he didn't go all the way because he didn't want to stand up his ass. And yeah, then that they was got funny. and then they got stabbed. And she's mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. see, we should have just done it out there. That was funny. Um, I love that it poked fun at that because I, that's what I'm always thinking. Anytime some romantic scene happens where they have sex on the beach, I'm like, that, that is not comfortable. That would be so gritty. And they Mm -hmm. just poked direct fun at it. It was so funny. Which that scene after was really intense when they sneak into his rooms and the assassins come, Mm -hmm. which they, things didn't end well for them. No, because (laughs) they, they (laughs) underestimated our girl. Like, yeah heavily underestimated our girl i don't remember what is it like carrie two where she like does like the the like vines or there's some horror movie where she just like does this and the vines grow that's what i was picturing in my head is her just like Mm -hmm. yeah there was some uh creativity in that like Mm -hmm. the thorns coming into his feet and pinning him in place and then just impaling (laughs) what a way to go I did like the action in this book. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Eric being the hero that he is went after, like jumped in front of the knife for her Mm -hmm. and got himself stabbed. And then he's like, watch out for the blood. Like I can't see. So (laughs) don't get my blood in you. Yeah. She didn't tell him that she had cuts all over her basically. I don't know if in the copy that you read. So like on ebook, because this is in Kindle Unlimited, you get to the end of the chapter and there's like a author newsletter sign up thing. And so if you sign up, you get two bonus scenes emailed to you. And I haven't read them yet, but one of them, yes, one of them is an Eric POV from when he first met Livia. And then the other scene is, I guess, the moment when he got those scars. And I I just, I don't have the heart to read that yet, (laughs) but- That, that's out there if you sign up with L.J. Andrews. And then we're kind of at the end. So they survive all of that. They finally get their spicy time, right? We're heading to go heal some more stuff. We also see, like, his palace. We get some palace time. Mm-hmm. And then we see her get kidnapped by Lars. Yes, because he's like out at sea doing all the stuff that he does, like healing his land. And we do find out like he's been letting her believe that her father was, you know, had stuff to do with his scars and torturing Mm -hmm. him and stuff, um, which was just not the case. His, her dad was um, a part of like saving him. Trying to stop it. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason he killed Eric's dad is because he was torturing Eric and so he killed him and in doing so took away Eric's only chance of feeling like his dad approved of him yes and so that's why Eric has been on this vendetta against him as he he felt like he took that away from him and the only true way to be a good king is to have the approval of the king before you Mm-hmm. And because he knew he didn't have that approval, he 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 always thought of himself as lesser. Yeah. There was another scene that kind of pissed me off when Livia, like, referred to him as being mangled, you know, his mm-hmm. mangled flesh or whatever. And he was so hurt. Like, his feelings were so upset about it. And I was just like, how are you going to say that to him? Because mm-hmm. he is obviously something that's, like, deeply embedded, like, entrenched in him that he's having trouble getting over. Yeah. Well, because his dad, like, paraded him around to everybody naked, basically, showing off all of these wounds and how much he, like, didn't deserve to be the king, basically. Yeah, like, it was some kind of weakness to be tortured mm-hmm. and scarred. By your own so dad. Backwards. Yeah. And your own people, basically. Yeah. Because they were trying to figure out his blood and use his blood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The end of the book, when Larson kidnaps kidnaps Livia and stabs Tate. First off, I was happy that Tate didn't die because I had grown mm-hmm. to like him and really empathize with him. So when Eric hurried back and saved him, I was happy about that. 
But also, since the next book is called The Ever Queen, and this book definitely had a throne scene, you know, we love our throne scenes, especially after like Rebecca Yaros, Iron Flame, mm-hmm. <laughs> that one. Like, I loved how Eric treated Livia in that scene. Yes. Like, basically, the whole like noble system was against her. And he's like, uh, bitch, please. And he goes and sets her on this throne, which there's never been an ever queen. It's always only been the ever king. And they thought it was a weakness to have a queen. And the queens were only there to produce heirs, basically. Like, And he's like, fuck that. Like, no, she is just as high as me. And you touch her, you die. <laughs> The the ever king tradition of only having kings was very parallel to Tamlin's in Akatar when he's mm-hmm. like, "There's never been a high lady. There's only a high lord." And then you know, Reese makes Feyre. Sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't read Akatar, but Reese makes Feyre like a high lady to his high lord, and so it was very parallel to that. So I just loved how he was all about balance and like you were were equals. Mm-hmm. Well, and he was. I think in that moment, he was trying to claim her to make sure nobody would hurt her Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. he had heard about the brother that was like the reason for the blight. And he was afraid that they would try and steal her or kidnap her or use her blood or something. Because, I mean, again, his blood was like people tortured him to get his blood as a kid. And so I think this was his way of protecting her. Like, you touch my queen and you die. Like, she is my queen. She is not, like, just some random woman that is giving me airs. Which, the way that he picked her up, basically, I'm, like, picturing him, like, tossing her over his shoulder and, like, plopping her butt down onto the throne, and then moments later, killing that guy, like, Mm -hmm. at her feet, (laughs) basically. The assassins, both of them. Yes. And the way that she just ate it up, like, it just, it, she loved it. Well, and he didn't just kill this dude, right? Like, as I said, his blood heals and it kills. So he, like, kept stabbing these guys and then giving them his blood and seeing so that, like, they would come back to life. And then he could do it again. And then, like, finally, he put them out of their misery. But, like, he didn't just kill them. He wanted to make sure that they knew that they were suffering because they touched her. That's definitely the one of the more memorable proclamations of love and mm-hmm. possessiveness that I yes. will recall in a book. <laughs> yes. He he wanted to make sure everybody was well aware that he would go to the ends of the earth for her. And then we see him, like the very last part. So she gets kidnapped. We see him going to her father at the very end. And that's where we cliffhanger it, is his team gets kidnapped caught by Jonas and and Jonas is is a little rough for wear right now because apparently he has not been sleeping and he is very worried about Livia and um he is very pissed off and so he he is taking the crew to her dad and they are going there to get help to get her back basically I just love how in this book you see the difference between all of the people that surrounded Eric with his family and just how they treated him, um, you know, compared to Livia and all of the love and support that she received from literally everyone around her family and friends. So I, I loved all of the times that she called him her beautiful monster. I really like that. And I a lot of people can be turned off by the whole pet name thing, but I did like the song Bird and Serpent. Um, little pet names that they had for each other. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I was surprised. Like I'd heard really good things. It's rated really highly, especially for being a first book in a series. Mm -hmm. Um, But like after it took several, several chapters to get into it, I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but um, you said that you listened to the audiobook. How was that? I liked it. Um, The, the, there were accents. So there were like English accents of the like readers. So I like Oh that. man, Tara loves that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I might have to listen to that one. I'm sure at some point, because we're probably completionists here, we're gonna have to read mm-hmm. the Ever Queen at some point, especially with the third and final book maybe coming out at the end of June. But 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I heard the Ever Queen is just as good, just as enjoyable, even though you got a kickstart already. I don't I haven't got that much of a kickstart. <laughs> so but Anyway, we hoped you enjoyed this discussion, um, and this was in part of our Amazon book club. So this was voted on. It came in like a very close tie, basically, with Trial of the Sun Queen. So we're just going to continue on and then host a little vote soon over on the socials to see, you know, what we'll have next, which means we'll probably cover the Miss Thief again at some point. So Tara will be going to Europe, and so we're going to have like a little mini break, but there's still going to be some bonus episodes released and, and other book talks as well. But be on the lookout on social media on where to vote and where to join the book club, and we're excited for whatever we read next. So thanks for tuning in. So Sandra, have you read any of my birthday books? I am 90% through Ruthless Night. Okay. Which you didn't tell me this was a 600 something page. Like, oh, I didn't know. Standalone okay. romance. <laughs> Sorry. Which you've mentioned the pre, not a prequel book, but the first book in the series, mm-hmm. Cruel Prince, before. So I was like, hmm, okay. Yeah, okay. it's one of those that I reread. It's not like a hard book to read. It, um, I didn't even realize it was 600 pages, but like this was one of my like comfort books. <laughs> Like that I go to when I just, I don't know what I want to read, but I want to read something. Interesting. Well, I cannot wait to talk to you about Ruthless Night. So maybe this will be one of our like extra episodes is Sandra's take on the like three different books that she is supposed to read. Yes. So we're excited to talk about that one. And then, yeah, we hope to see you in the book club and on social media. So Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.